Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to texture a cube with PBR materials. We're going to use color, metalness, roughness, normal, height, and ambient occlusion maps. You can get free PBR materials at textures.com. If you look in the library under PBR materials, you can get free PBR materials for all kinds of different surfaces that you can use in your projects. First I'm creating a new instance of a texture loader, so const texture loader is equal to new 3 texture loader, and I'm going to use this texture loader to load all the different texture maps. Once you have downloaded your PBR materials, you should have a bunch of different images here. So let's go through them one by one. Here I'm loading my ambient inclusion image. So here's the image down in the right hand corner, and it's a black and white image. This image shows shadow information, so how much ambient light reaches a point on the surface. The white spots in the image receive full indirect light. And I'm just using the texture loader to load this image from this path in my directory. The textures folder in the PBR folder, and this is the file name. And I'm going to store that in cube2ao. Next is my metalness map. The metalness map tells us if, if the information is a metal or non-metal. So a metal will have tinted reflections and a non-metal will not. White parts of the image will be metal and black parts will be non-metal. So since this is wood, this is a non-metal, so it's all black. I'm storing the metal map in cube 2 metal. I'm just loading this texture and this is the path of where that texture is in my directory. Okay, next is the roughness map. The roughness map shows which parts of the surface reflect light. So the black parts of the image are smooth and reflect more light, and the white parts of the image are rough. And here I'm just storing this image in cube 2 rough, and I'm loading this texture image from this path in my directory. Okay, next is the normal map. The normal map uses RGB values, red, green, and blue, to translate to XYZ coordinates to give depth to your image. You can see the colors are different from the middle of the log compared to where the two logs join together. So I'm calling this cube 2 normal and I'm loading this texture from this path in my directory. Okay, next up is the height map. The height map measures relative heights from 0 to 1. So the white areas of the image have a greater height and the black areas have a lower height. And that makes sense for these curved logs, right? The black areas should be lower than the middle of the logs which will be sticking out. And I'm storing this image in cube 2 height and I'm just loading that texture from this path in my directory. And next is my albedo image. I'm using the albedo image for the color of my texture. So that's going to be my color map, the RGB map, which shows the color of that object or texture. So I'm storing this in cube 2 color and I'm just loading that texture from this path in my directory. We went over the different type of PBR materials and loaded these materials into 3JS. Now we're ready to use them to texture our object. So my object will be called cube2 and my mesh will be created using my geometry and material. So my geometry is 3 dot box geometry and it's 1 meter wide, 1 meter high and 1 meter long. And the last three parameters are the number of segments. So I have 64 segments for my width, height and length. You need a reasonable number of segments for the textures to take effect. And you can play with these numbers depending on what type of texture you use. Now I'm creating my material. I'm using a mesh standard material. And the first thing I'm doing is setting my color map. So my color map will be cube to color. That's going to stretch that image over the object and tell it what colors to use. Remember cube to color was my albedo image. Okay, now let's do our normal map, I'm passing in cube 2 normal into my normal map, and you can control your normal map using the normal scale. So normal scale is a 2D vector, so set it as new 3.vector2, 1, 1, and that's the default value is 1, 1. It's how much the normal map affects the material. So here's my object, and I have a this slider that I can adjust the x and y values. And remember, normal map is used to fake light, lighting of bumps and dents. So if I increase the x value of the normal scale, you can see that it's becoming a bit darker because I'm adding more details in these areas. And if I lower it, then the material becomes lighter. And the same with the y value. Y value, it gets darker and it adds more details. The wood looks more weathered, and if I lower the value, then the wood looks newer and brighter. 
and there's less detail. So that's a way you can control your normal map using the normal scale x, y values. Okay, now let's add our displacement map. I'm setting cube 2 height as the property value of my displacement map. And you can control displacement map uh, in two ways. You can use the displacement scale, which shows how much the displacement map affects the mesh. The default value is 1. And the displacement bias. The displacement bias is the offset of the displacement map on the mesh vertices. So let's see what that looks like. So the displacement scale. So you can see as I increase the scale, the curve of the logs increases. And the amount they separate from each other increases. So you're scaling up the amount of displacement between the vertices. And displacement bias doesn't do that. Displacement bias just moves things along the x, y, z axis. It does not increase the amount of displacement. When you use the displacement scale, it separates the sides from each other a bit, depending on what data is in your displacement map. But you can bring those sides closer by using displacement bias so that they join up again, but they still retain the amount of displacement in your displacement map. Okay, now the roughness map. So I'm setting cube 2 rough as my property value for my roughness map. And you can control the roughness map using the roughness value. Its default is 1, so it's a little bit darker when it's lower, and it's a little bit lighter when it's higher. Now we're going to add our ambient occlusion map. So your ambient inclusion map will need a second set of UV values. I've made the second set here. So I've just copied the geometry attributes from UV to UV2 for its second set of UVs. So I'm setting cube 2 AO as my property value for my AO map. And you can control your ambient occlusion using AO map intensity. By default, it's 1. But 0 means there's no occlusion effects. So let's see what that looks like. As I lower my ambient occlusion map intensity, it's a little brighter. And as I increase it, it's a little darker. Now let's add our metalness map. I'm adding the metal image to my metalness map. And you can control the metalness map by using the metalness property value. So I'm setting that to 0. And by default, it is 0. And that's really just a 0 or a 1. 0 is a non-metal, and 1 is a metal. And I'm increasing it. See, there's no change when I slide it from 0 to 1 because my metalness map was all black. So it's a non-metal, so nothing will change. And then I just set the position of the cube and added it to the scene. So that's how you can use PBR materials to texture an object in 3JS.